Hi boys and girls. We are here with another little music moment about our composer of the month, Johann Sebastian Bach. And Frau Lou would probably get really angry with me at the way I pronounce that word. But anyway, I'm going to read to you this book called Becoming Bach. And it's actually told from first person point of view, which means that Bach himself is actually narrating or telling this story. This book was written by Tom Leonard, and he does this beautiful illustration in here of a person with music notes all around it, dedicating the book to um, his mother, his agent, and his wife, and his muse, which is a muse is a person who gives inspiration. So, this is Becoming Bach. There was always music. And here is a picture where it shows the Greeks making music and then music through the Renaissance. And then it comes all the way over here to a picture of his father playing the violin. So in Bach's household, his father was a musician. And his father's name was Johann Ambrosius Bach. So he grew up, whenever you have parents who are musicians, it's natural that the child is going to hear music all the time around their homes. Music was always being played. When it wasn't being played, I heard it in my head. And this is a picture of Johann Sebastian whenever he was being surrounded by music, whenever he was one year old. So it talks about him hearing music in his head. You know how you can tell if babies hear music in their head? Sometimes you'll see babies and they'll just be wiggling around. They may be hearing sounds or sometimes they're making sounds. And that's the first parts of making music is making your own sounds. My family had been musicians for over 200 years. In our part of Germany, musicians were called Bachs, B-A-C-H-S. It's his last name. And it shows, and it, it says, I always wanted to be a Bach. And here it shows his family tree. There, all of these ancestors were musicians. Now, this is kind of an interesting picture right here. We know that Johann's father was a violin, and there's his father at the family tree with the violin. But look at his mother. Do you see how the mother has music notes coming out of her mouth? What do you think that means? Well, it means she was a singer. Here are some of his ancestors. Christoph Bach, Johann Samuel Bach, Johann Gunther Bach, Johann Michael Bach, Heinrich Bach, Johann Christoph Bach, Viet Bach, and Johann Jacob Bach. Lots of Bachs. We would bring our instruments and play and sing on a hillside. Even our picnics had music. Hmm. They look mighty dressed up to be going on a picnic. Look at there. By the lake. They didn't wear shorts back then, and they certainly didn't go jumping in the water. But this is what they did when they went on picnics. They brought their own instruments. They didn't have electronics, so if you wanted to be entertained, you had to bring your own. I learned to play the harpsichord. That's going to be one of our instruments of the month coming up. The trumpet, which you've probably heard a trumpet. The violin, it's going to be another one of our instruments of the month. The flute and the organ. And I sang in my strongest voice. So back then, 
A lot of times people played lots of different instruments and they also sang. Typically, if they played an instrument, they also sang, which is kind of true today. Most, well, most musicians I know do sing as well. And so, you know, he was very, very gifted. After my mother and father went to heaven, I needed to say things, but words weren't enough. Now, we know what that means. After his parents died, he needed to say things, but words weren't enough. What this is talking about is he needed to express his emotions. And some people express emotions by putting their emotions into music. And that's what he's talking about there. So in 1694, he went to Ordruf. I walked over 30 miles with my brother, Johann Jacob, to live with our oldest brother, Johann Christoph. He taught me music. Now, if you know anything about Germany, you know that in the wintertime, it snows. So can you imagine walking? Look at that big pack he has on the back. And look there, what's on the backpack? <laughs> it's a violin case. He's got a walking stick to help him get across the snow. So that was probably a pretty hard journey. I love to copy music, but my brother hid the hard music from me. I found it when he was sleeping at night and copied it. Okay, let me explain this there were no copying machines. If you wanted a copy of something, you had to actually take a feather and sharpen it and dip it in ink and look at what you wanted to copy and actually copy it yourself on music paper or it's called manuscript paper. And that's, and look, he's doing it by candlelight because there was no electricity. So if he wanted to play that music and he wanted a copy of it, he had to make his own copies. Now, can you imagine how much time that took? The music made patterns on the page. The patterns made music when you played them. So what this is talking about is the different music notes, the different values and how they look. And so this is what he saw, were all these patterns. And his brother hid the hard music from him. Hmm. Wonder if he just didn't want him to try and learn to play that hard music. So that's what he was copying. Patterns like the designs on my mother's dress. Patterns like the ripples on the surface of the river. This is talking about how he saw these notes and it reminded him of things. And here's some more patterns that he saw. Patterns in music, that's what we call rhythm. It's rhythm. And we use music notes to make rhythms. New sounds, happy sounds, quiet sounds, yellow sounds, red sounds, blue sounds, all the sounds in my head. Now look at this illustration. Now you probably can think about music and think about what happy sounds would sound like and probably quiet sounds, but what do you think he meant by yellow sounds and red sounds and blue sounds? That's something to think about. What would those sounds sound like? I needed to make patterns, so I wrote music. Patterns of sounds, patterns of invention. Just seven notes. Every note made a different sound. Now, what he's referring to here, and here's the illustration of this page, these seven notes he's talking about, the basic notes of music are just seven notes. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Or... A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it starts back over with A. Now there are some variations of those notes, flats and sharps, and we'll get into talking about those later, but it's basically, it's around seven notes. 
the notes of the scale. And then it just repeats itself over and over. Just seven notes. Two notes together make a different sound. Three notes together make an even different sound. What sounds could I make with seven notes? Now this is quite an illustration. Look at this fabulous castle made out of music notes. Wow, that is so cool. And there he is at the bottom conducting with his hands and all that music is coming out of his hands. That is a pretty fabulous piece of artwork right there. I love it, love it. I saw patterns everywhere I looked. Now, he's comparing his patterns that he came up with with some windows that he saw. That's kind of cool too. When I got my first job as a church organist, I sat down at the organ. I looked at the massive pipes that seemed to rise up to heaven above. The manuals on the keyboards all lined up in black and white and the pedals on the pedal board beneath my feet. I looked at the stops in rows like notes on a page and I pulled out all the stops. Now what this is talking about, when I, we use the pipe organ as one of our instruments of the week, you'll see that the pipe organ has pipes that air is blown up in through and that's what makes a sound. It's kind of like big old giant flutes. And here is what he's talking about with the manuals. That's where you put your hand on and you play. And then those knobs are called stops. And when you pull those out, it activates certain ones of those pipes to make certain sounds. Different lengths of sounds make different um, types of sounds. And then the pedal board there, you actually play it with your feet. So you have keyboards to play with your hands and you play a whole keyboard with your foot, feet. It's kind of fun. I get to do that every Sunday. So it's a lot of fun. And here is a humongous illustration of Johann Sebastian Bach at the organ. Look at that. So, as I produced the largest sound possible, a sound that could be heard for miles, it was a mighty sound. It was a sound that would be heard forever. It was the sound in my head. And so people loved hearing him play. This is so funny. This little guy even has a t-shirt with Bach on it. Pretty funny, pretty funny. It was then that I knew I had become a Bach. Johann Sebastian Bach. And there he is. Um, in another video, I'm going to share with you and, and tell you a little bit about going to the church where Bach actually um, worked as an organist in Leipzig, Germany. And um, it was one of the coolest things I've ever got to do was to see actually where Bach played the organ and um, worked as a Bach in Germany or a, a musician in Germany. All right, keep on looking at the videos that I post um, on our um, Google slide about Bach, and we will continue to learn some more about him as our composer of the month. Welcome, Bach, to school. Love it. Bye.